Hey everyone, so after my last video, I had like a dozen people reach out to me and ask me questions about cybersecurity certifications. So I thought, hey, why not do a video on it? So here are a few things I wish I had known when I just started out, specifically about uh, certifications. So yeah, let's go. Number one, I'd say the commercialization, if that's the term, of cybersecurity and certifications. And what I mean by this is that not every certificate is actually focused on providing you with a, a depth of skill or give or sort of like an introduction to what it's really like to do this job as a penetration tester, as an ethical hacker, as a cybersecurity analyst. A lot of these certificates tend to be commercialized. They tend to be companies or colleges offering a certification that has a level of market value because cybersecurity just happens to be a buzzword. And what happens is people buy into this ideology of the certificate, they sign up, they go through a course, and then they're sitting in the end of that feeling that they've sort of, there's some value or this some sense of accomplishment. Granted, yes, going through the motions of studying and writing an exam and passing a certification, definitely there's always a sense of accomplishment there. However, the first thing I wish I had known when I started off was there are quite a few certificates that just hold that sort of commercial incentive. It's a business at the end of the day. That's what it's all about. Um, so in order to counter that, you have to do research. You have to understand what's out there and what employers are looking for. What's going to bring value to your skill set and what's going to make you marketable to uh, employees and companies out there. Right. Then the next thing that I wish I'd known was the lack of realism when it comes to cybersecurity certifications. And when I say this is that there are quite a few certifications that are either sort of so heavily focused on tool sets and technologies, and it's almost like it's a plugin for another business or another product. And that's not necessarily what we do as professions it is skill focused and at the end of the day you need to apply yourself you need to be able to deliver a, a, a certain value to clients in this field of cybersecurity. so going back to the lack of realism what I, what I mean by that also is that cybersecurity certifications tend to be heavily gamified the gamification of hacking for example and while that's fun and while that will sort of, how should I put this? Uh, it will allow you to, to learn new skills and you'll learn new technical skills, definitely, yes. And you have a whole lot of fun while doing it. It lack it lacks realism. It's not necessarily what you'll be doing on the job. And that's something to be very cautious of because if you do approach your work the way you approach a certificate, like a capture the flag or CTF, you may just end up getting fired. And um, I mean, there was actually an incident uh, a few years ago in my career where I had a, a junior um, consultant on the job and I was the lead in the Pentest. And well, he didn't get fired, but he, I mean, his outlook on, on penetration testing, on ethical hacking was only through the lens of what he learned in his certification. And it was kind of like a struggle for him to adapt to the more formalized process in the work environment. So that is definitely another point to look out for, lack of realism. And the only way to sort of counter that is, is kind of immerse yourself in the community around you and speak to actively re speak to people who share this interest of cybersecurity, of penetration testing and understand, hey, get their opinion their view what is it like to uh, on, on the job what is it that i need to prepare for an interview uh, or to be a consultant or to be an engineer um, what's what's it like just what's it like being in a company and being in a cybersecurity team because certifications won't necessarily give you like the the real world aspect and granted it's probably not intended to do so it's there to learn a few skills and and and, and you know upskill and gain some uh, some technical knowledge and theoretical knowledge. Um, yeah, so let's go to the next one. The next one would be levels to the game. <laughs> so again, 
with cybersecurity certificates. They are levels to the game. There are certifications that just require you to answer multiple choice questions. And if you get a score 70 or higher, then you are certified. And then there are certificates that kind of have a little bit of theoretical aspect and you're going to have to sit through an examination while having sort of a more practical aspect, maybe like an assignment or a workshop or a sandbox environment. And then there are those certifications that are purely, purely practical. And I personally lean towards the latter, the practical ones, because I find like I get, gain the most value from the practical skills. But there are levels to the game. There are levels to the game. So you need to reflect and assess what is the requirement for you at your stage in your career. If you are coming to high school and you don't have a formal education, it wouldn't be a completely bad idea to start with the with the basics and look at maybe a few ID certificates first, like Network 101 or Network Plus or, or like, you, you get what I'm saying, like the very core IT skills that will eventually feed into your uh, pursuit of a cybersecurity certificate because those those are the building blocks those are necessary but say you are a university graduate and you really want to break into the industry there's there's a few options there right you could go take a gradual approach you could do something like uh, an ethical hacker course a certified security analyst course and build your way up or you could just grab the bull by the horns and do something more like on the offensive security side like an OSCP which by the way kind of is like I mean that is like a game changer if you get your OSCP it's generally you are considered to be someone who is of a good aptitude and technical standard in the industry if, if that makes sense but Again, when I say there's levels to the game, it really depends where you are in your career. Now, if you are working as a security consultant for three years or four years, and you're kind of like looking towards um, making your way to a principal level or senior level or management, then believe it or not, maybe OSCP isn't really going to be a good choice for you because like, but again, that is still considered an, an entry level certificate in the industry in the sense that it's just the tip of the iceberg trust me there's so much to learn in this industry and there's so much knowledge to gain it's like that is just the tip of the iceberg so it could be that you need to be an exploit development expert you need to look into you need to look into reverse engineering i don't know so you have to and that's only a question you can answer knowing the levels of the game and knowing which certificate this certification would apply best to you and your needs and where you are at now in your career or your journey and that will only come through research and speaking to the right people be it people in your uh, in your circle of uh, studies or in your company um, but it's really a, a case by case uh, kind of situation you know yeah so yeah um, the next one would be time and I cannot stress enough like on this one so again going back to being more of like fulfilling like a more traditional uh, tech role right if you were doing a sort of for example a new Microsoft industry certificate certification say there's server 2023 or whatever or 2019 or whatever and you need to do uh, these uh, like a collection of these certifications to get a hey I'm a certified Microsoft engineer whatever it's kind of like cool I can spend a month or two uh, going through the coursework and then I just practice on the brain dumps and then I answer the multiple choice questions and then I'm certified no with security certifications it can be really unforgiven like like uh, you could easily spend a year or even two years on a single security uh, cyber security certificate or pen test certificate and that's something i wish i had known and perhaps i could have approached things differently or prepared better like kind of i remember like my first lab time for oscp and i'm not sponsored by oscp or anything i'm just this is just my own experience and i remember signing up for like a 30-day lab time 
um and this was still like the old standard of OCP. and like you kind of think like cool if i just like commit to this like i dedicate my life to this for the next 30 days and at the end of that i'll do the exam and cool everything will be fine doesn't always work out that way and if you speak to other people in the industry they'll tell you it doesn't always work out that way so you could end up spending anything from 30 days to six months to a year to two years sometimes it's like studying for a diploma or a degree that's something you need to prepare yourself for you kind of need to have a more of a medium term plan like don't go into a certificate thinking i'm just gonna do this for 30 days and everything's hunky-dory just kind of have a plan like think beyond the first examination prepare for both outcomes of course you want to go in with a positive mindset you want to do your best we all want to do that we all want to get it out the way move on to the next one but like again it's it, it's very time intensive it's very very time intensive so that's something you need to prepare for and understand um the other thing i wish i knew was i'm gonna call it gatekeepers gatekeepers right so some certifications act as gatekeepers to the industry even though like if you kind of take a look at like other careers like if you're in the medical field or you're in law or you're in accounting there's like this standard and this is you have to pass the board or the bar exam before you are qualified Th that type of thing doesn't exist in cybersecurity. It doesn't exist in penetration testing. However, there are some certifications or some institutions out there that offer certifications. And because they've kind of made a, a sort of a name for themselves and they have this big reputation, they kind of now act like gatekeepers. And it's like everyone just kind of jumps onto the bandwagon companies and employers will jump onto the bandwagon like cool in order for you to be at this level in your job you need to have that certificate a certificate first and that's the end of it and again talking from practical experience i had i experienced this a few years ago where i was like a mid-tier consultant and i was now looking over to being like being promoted to a senior and granted, I was fulfilling the role of, of a senior. I was uh, mentoring uh, interns. I was leading my own pen test. I could scope my own projects. I could deliver those reports and give, provide feedback. I do everything that a senior consultant would do. But then, like, whenever it came to that, like, promotion time, I'd have a conversation with my manager or my team lead, and they're like, once you get this certificate, you are guaranteed a promotion, even though the value I deliver or bring to the company doesn't change. Like, it doesn't change. I still do the job. I do the job well. I still put in my best effort, and I still do those things. All the changes that I have, this, this little acronym to my name or my sig email signature. And I think the reason why companies do that is because of the marketability aspect. So when they submit a proposal, to other uh, like potential clients it kind of looks good to have that on a cv or on a or on a business proposal um and that's kind of why it's almost like the, you know these industry some of these certifications some of these institutes become gatekeepers which is i mean it's not necessarily fair but that's just how it is so yeah i mean I'd say that's those are the few things that I wish I had known. And I just want to I just want to kind of like wrap it up with this. So how do you how do you kind of get ahead of this, right? I like how do you really approach certifications? And I'd say like I'm all for the practical side of it. Like whatever certification you do firstly, ensure that there's an element of like of practical learning because this is a very practical job. It's very it's very manual intensive. And I don't mean that in the sense of you're going to be lifting bricks. I mean that you're going to be using your brain and you're going to be applying a, a skill set. And I cannot stress on research. Research, research, research. And if you get really good at researching, I mean, at some point that could even surpass the need for you ever having a certificate. Because some of the best, some of the best sort of professionals in this industry are researchers, are people who came from a research background 
also any any practical certificate you do it's going to it's going to expect you to do a bit of research it's not like you are given all the answers and you and the course co- 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 material is going to cover absolutely everything you are going to have to think for yourself you are going to have to apply your mind you are going to have to research that's just how it is anyways that's my take on a few things i wish i'd known about cybersecurity certifications when i started out if you like this video don't forget to give it a like thumbs up and subscribe and if you have any questions please feel free to reach out to me uh, see you on the next one